Yes, the garage is absolutely thrashed and we're not done yet. I'm gonna thrash it even more because we've gotta finish up the Wrangler. In this video, we're gonna do the Dana 44 high steer knuckle, the high steer arm, fix our steering up and get everything back together for a test drive. So stay tuned. We're gonna get it out of the garage. You'll be able to see it with the stretch kind of far, far away and get a way cooler perspective on how it looks now because it looks awesome. Oh. Yeah, beefy heist to your arm. Looks tapered, I hope it's the right one. Cone washers and studs. And our new knuckle. Here's our old knuckle compared to the new one. And right away you can see there's some big differences. You can see how much I shaved this one down and it has a threaded stop right there. This one just has a giant piece of metal right there. That's all gonna have to get cut off. And then right here, this is the most critical part in getting the RCV bell inside the axle and had to take a lot of material off there. This is completely filled in. So this is gonna be a lot of grinding to get this knuckle to fit. Uh, my only real concern outside of that is that we have no axle stop so I might have to weld a nut onto the tube instead because we got to have that on there to make sure our tires aren't turning too sharp because they will hit the leaf springs if they're not on there yikes so as I'm taking off all of this extra material the thought is definitely going through my head is this too much to take off when you go to upgrade these knuckles it's kind of intuitive that you would have a stronger axle but this is definitely making it weaker and I'm just curious how weak will it be after this but really there's no way to do this other than chop it off or else you can't use the RCV axles. Well there's step one taking all that material off the backside. That was a lot so now we need to go over the grind wheel get it smoothed out a little bit more. I would like to go over it with a flap wheel but we're gonna have to do some fitment once we get it on the axle. So we've got to flip it over now and we have way more to cut off the other side. So it's a little bit uncomfortable but it's gotta be done for the RCVs. We just cut out that huge chunk right here. I mean inches of metal. And this arm total is a lot thicker than the stock one that was on. All right, I think we got most of it done. You can see there's the stock one that I grinded out and then here is the aftermarket one that I took a lot out of the center right here. I mean, inches worth. It's funny because in the aftermarket knuckles, they're basically advertising in the, these as way stronger because there's all this added material up here. I mean, it went up like that high. It's also funny because I would like that, but I need to do the opposite. I need to take all that material off so I can swing that bell in right there. I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to get off of there. It looks pretty similar to that one. We might have to grind a little bit off right here. You can see it's a little bit lower on that one. All right, time travel. We've got the new knuckle put on. We've got the thick high steer arm torqued down and we swapped out some tie rod ends. So now, come on over. There we go. So now everything's lining up pretty good. One problem that we ran into, which I had forecasted, I knew this was gonna happen, is the frame getting in the way. So you can see here, we notched it. I took an inch and a quarter up. So it's about a third of the frame because this is four inches. And then I boxed it in with rectangular tubing that was eighth inch. And then I framed box around it with 3 16 So pretty uh, heavy duty now. We just welded it all the way around. And it's hard to tell this side of the axle is up a little bit, but it gave us probably about, well, an inch and a quarter more than we would have had without hitting the frame. But now it can come up this high and we're already probably like an inch and a half up. Plenty of up travel, at least it looks like we're gonna have it. We need to start doing is cleaning up the rest of this notch out of the frame. I think we took enough off the knuckle. Yeah, we had to take a lot off again. Um, even if I didn't shave it for RCVs, you can see how close it is in there. It actually wasn't fitting to turn with just the knuckle stock. So for whatever reason with this Jeep Wagoneer axle, that new aftermarket knuckle wasn't gonna fit. But the cool thing about this setup, this material is not too hard to get through. We drilled that out for the tie rod and a seven eight sleeve. This part of the heist your arm is already drilled out for a Chevy one ton taper. Um, we have pretty much everything torqued down except the drag link 
and the jam nuts and whatnot. And then obviously this needs to get torqued down, but we already cut the, the threads off the ball joint right there. We've got the studs pressed in. Really, we can start putting this back together, but what we need to start with is the RCV axles. So open these babies up all the way and try to get those RCVs back in the axle. You guys don't wanna see that, do you? No, I didn't think so. Moving on. So this is officially my third or fourth time taken apart this front axle and the only good thing that comes to that is I'm actually really good at it now and I can do this in probably 10 minutes or less as long as I don't drop anything. I had some footage of me driving the Jeep on the test drive but it's not very interesting it's just me driving the Jeep around so I decided to leave it out and well I'll just talk about everything that happened now. All right she's out of the garage moved four inches forward in the front there so we needed a new drive shaft actually went to sacramento drive line or drive line of sacramento so now i see why everybody likes to use sac drive line i went in told them i needed my drive shaft lengthened to a spe specified amount i think it was like 42 and a half inches and i was looking to get a few more inches of slip on the end so they said yeah you're gonna have to get a new slip yoke so that drove the price up a little bit but even them being backed up they were able to get this drive shaft out the next Next day so I went and picked it up and geez they threw new paint on it I got some new um, solid u-joints on there so hopefully I measured right I'll throw it in the Jeep all right everything is torqued down and buttoned up. So the next thing to do is to take this baby for a test drive. But before we do that, just in case something's loose and then I go off the road and the Jeep's totaled, let's go over everything that we did. So the main reason for all this work was to move this front axle four inches forward. We had a lot of issues with how the suspension was set up the first time. The first one was the shackles. They were actually too far out. The camber was just like way off on them because the spring perches on the Wagoneer Dana 44 are a little bit wider than the mounts on the spring hanger and shackle hanger on the front. So they were both outboarded pretty bad and it was messing up my shackle angles, messing up the flex, all that. So the way to fix that was to cut off the spring hanger. You can still see some of the remnants back there. I didn't finish this part just yet, but we cut that off and then we put some new spring hangers on, boxed them into the frame on both sides. And then on the front, the shackle hanger was like right here. So we moved that like two and a half inches forward, something like that. And we got new boomerang shackles on there. But the most important part is that those were outboarded on the spring hanger and shackle hanger both. So now springs are nice and straight and they're not bound up. And you can see with that angle right there, just a little bit forward, that way, when this tire goes to drop, we'll get a little bit more droop, which will help the opposite end go up. So that was one thing we did. The other thing was the steering. So before we had the inverted T, so the drag link went from the pitman arm down to right here on the tie rod. And that wasn't bad, but when we stretched it, that moved the diff to right under the pitman arm with that drop pitman and the tie rod end like right there it just wasn't gonna work so what we did is we got a flat pitman arm off of a Chevy Astro drilled it out to 7 8 put a tie rod taper insert into it now running the tie rod end on the top the next issue we ran into going down to here was the drag link was just too steep it's gonna take a lot more force to steer that way probably gonna get some twitchy steering and it was probably gonna max out our tie rod end when this side drooped all the way so the last part was was to get a Dana 44 high steer knuckle and we just mounted that up and now we have our tie rod end going in over the knuckle which is a lot stronger way to do it and it just gets all of our geometry right so of course every time you change something there's an effect later on right so one of the issues with that was clearance on the drag link so we ended up taking out about an inch and a half of the frame we just notched that out boxed it in plated the frame with 3 16 and that gave us about three inches of up travel on the drag link right there and you can see it's a little bit wider than the drag link on both sides because when this axle comes up it's going to want to move forward but when we're turning the drag link's going to want to move backwards so we just give it a little bit of slop on each side it's about an inch and a half wide but we have a four inch gap 
for it. So hopefully that's gonna be enough room. Time will tell. While we were messing with the axle, got some braces on there. So you can see the gussets on the top and the bottom of the Dana 44. Biggest reason why this didn't get completed sooner and it's now like three videos is because of that orange bell right there. That boot is protecting the RCV axle shaft, which are warrantied up to a 40 inch tire, which is perfect for us because we're only running a 38. So those should be plenty strong enough. Our shocks still work and our brake lines didn't. We added on this Rubicon Express mount right here and Rubicon Express lines. We've got plenty of line down there. Requirement at the end was to get the new drive shaft. So there's our new drive shaft in there, uh, long skinny boy. We are gonna have to get some armor for this stuff eventually. I already crushed in my exhaust up there, but the brakes could be bled again. That would help out. I'm about ready to take it for a test drive, like I said, and you know, I'm really excited to try out the ride because I think this wheelbase was gonna help out that ride also taking out some of the leaves we took out the second shortest leaf in the front leaf pack so i'm really hoping that that will soften things up but i mean i guess you can't really tell unless you're looking for it but the stretch looks awesome i've got plenty of room on the tire to the top on the fender and to the aft side of it it'd be cool if we wanted to run a 40 someday we're set up to do that as far as clearances go. If this the whole thing went perfectly, then uh, this would not be Fortune Off-Road. A couple videos ago, I mentioned how our camber on the front tires, they were both positive camber, like this one was sticking out that way. And on the passenger side, that one was sticking out that way. The previous owner got a hold of me and he said, hey man, I think what it is is the, uh, the shim in there is on upside down. So if you flip it around, it should even it out. It did, this side is perfect. The other side looked perfect when we did it. Must be because of the new knuckle. Very hard to tell from this angle but this tire in the front is actually going negative it's inside a little too much so yes we are gonna have to tear that apart again but thank god we don't have to take out the rcv axle shafts that's the real only pain in the butt tearing this down now that i've done it a million times in a short period i'm actually pretty good at it now so that, that shouldn't take too long but i'm gonna drive around on the street then we're gonna go wheeling and then I'm gonna tear it apart because I don't wanna tear it into it for no reason. And then shortly after that, we've gotta get everything taped off and just paint all of this. I'm gonna pretty much paint everything black under there and this thing's gonna look good, but holy moly does this thing need a wash. This is all grease from sitting all the parts on the hood. All right, wish me luck guys. Test drive was a great success. Tried to hit some potholes and bumps at speed like 55 miles an hour to see if we're gonna have any death wobble now. We still don't. So I pretty much keep, kept the axle oriented the way that it was before I cut everything off. And I've never even had a steering stabilizer on this thing. That's how well it's driven on the road. So next we are looking to work on the Samurai, just get it kind of tuned up and ready to go on the Rubicon and any other runs we want to do before then. Then we're gonna take the Jeep on the Rubicon at some point. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Guys, thanks for checking out this video. I know a lot of you want to see the Samurai, but uh, you know, this is part of our family now. So we do Jeep and we do Samurai. The goal as always is to get them out together. We've only done it one time I think I got to get the wife up to speed driving and get her comfortable driving one of them and uh, then we can start going out together it'll be awesome thanks for checking out the video see you guys in the next one